Many high-performance airplanes take advantage of turbocharged engines, which allow for cruise operations at higher altitudes into the flight levels. To understand the impact of a turbocharger, it's helpful to remember how altitude affects aircraft power and performance. Non-turbocharged or normally aspirated engines breathe the same air we do. Like normally aspirated humans, they lose power with an increase in altitude. As atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude, the engine runs out of breath. At full throttle, manifold pressure will decrease at the rate of one inch for each thousand feet of altitude. This translates to a loss of about 3% of horsepower for every 1,000 feet of altitude. The reduced manifold pressure at full throttle is caused by the reduced mass of the fuel-air mixture, which is in turn caused by the reduced air density. The mass of this mixture determines the energy released by combustion and ultimately power output. The ability of an aircraft engine to maintain power at higher altitudes is dependent on the consistent intake and compression of air for fuel combustion. The mass of the fuel-air mixture must be increased, or at least maintained, by packing air into the induction system. Turbocharging does that by compressing air and increasing the air pressure and density of the fuel-air mixture. Turbochargers utilize a turbine in the exhaust system, which is spun by otherwise wasted exhaust gases. This turbine drives a compressor that is housed separately but shares a common shaft. The compressor does just what its name says. It compresses air for use in the induction system to maintain power and, in the case of a pressurized airplane, to pump up the cabin. Turbocharged engines are further classified as either turbo-normalized or ground-boosted. The altitude engine, or what is also called normalized, uses the turbocharger to ensure a constant sea level power is maintained even at higher altitudes. It will not increase engine manifold pressure above sea level power. The normalized engine may simply be a stock engine with a bolt-on turbocharger installed as a modification under a supplemental type certificate, or come that way right from the factory. In theory, any engine could be altitude boosted because power never exceeds the sea level designed output of the naturally aspirated engine. In practice, though, increasing intake air pressure will also increase the air temperature. This presents a greater risk of pre-ignition and detonation of the fuel-air mixture. It also adds to the general wear and tear on the engine. To combat this effect, some systems incorporate an intercooler to reduce the temperature of the compressed air as it enters the induction system. Because an intercooler lowers air intake temperatures, air density is conversely increased, making the engine feel like it's flying on a cooler day and provide improved performance. The other type of turbocharged engine is called ground-boosted. A ground-boosted turbocharger will increase the manifold pressure above standard sea level pressure. Ground boosting directly increases the overall power output of the engine to achieve its sea level rated power without increasing the size of the engine itself. For example, the naturally aspirated IO550 engine in a Cirrus SR22 will produce a maximum of 30 inches of manifold pressure at sea level. Compare this to the turbocharged SR22T variant that will produce a sustained 36.5 inches of manifold pressure until 16,000 feet. Similarly, the Piper Malibu with a turbocharged TIO540 can be ground boosted in excess of 42 inches of manifold pressure. The increased power output puts additional stress on the core components of the engine requiring the pilot to pay more attention to how it is operated compared to a normally aspirated engine. If some extra manifold pressure is good, it doesn't follow that a lot is better. Too much manifold pressure is called overboosting, which may damage or even destroy an engine. Virtually all modern factory installed systems include safeguards to prevent overboosting. This is generally accomplished with the use of a pressure relief valve installed in the induction system. Under some circumstances, such as rapid throttle movement, especially with cold oil, 
it's possible that an overboost may still occur. This would most likely happen during the first takeoff on a cold day, or it could also occur if the pilot suddenly applies full throttle while in flight. It is therefore necessary that the pilot anticipate these situations and monitor the manifold pressure to avoid exceeding the limit value. Manifold pressure at a given throttle setting depends on compressor output, which is directly proportional to turbine speed. Turbine speed is regulated by a wastegate, which can be compared to a floodgate in a dam. When the wastegate is open, the exhaust gases bypass the turbine and are wasted. No boost is developed by the compressor, and manifold pressure is not increased. With the wastegate completely closed, the full force of the exhaust hits the turbine. By regulating the flow of exhaust gases directed to the turbine, the wastegate essentially controls the turbine speed and engine power as a result. The least sophisticated turbocharger systems have full manual control, where the pilot has a separate control to set the position of the wastegate. On some ground-boosted engines, the conventional wastegate is replaced by a fixed opening that continually allows a preset volume of exhaust gas to escape. This is sometimes called a fixed wastegate system. Some engines use a throttle wastegate interconnect system. When the throttle is initially advanced, the wastegate remains open. After the throttle position is about half, the wastegate begins to shut and becomes completely closed at the full throttle setting. The pilot must limit the throttle movement to keep manifold pressure within the limit specified for the engine. More automatic systems use sensors at various point in the induction system to maintain manifold pressure through wastegate adjustments. Air pressure sensors in the induction system regulate pressure in oil lines that change the position of the wastegate. When the full output of the turbocharger is used, the wastegate is completely closed and there is no longer any automatic control.